Missouri just might have themselves a new starting quarterback in the Armed Forces Bowl. Plus, the Missouri basketball team picks up a much-needed victory in Columbia. And also Nick Bolton with a huge game for the Kansas City Chiefs. And you know what? I got to weigh in on the Chargers' fourth down decision-making as well. And all this and more coming up right now on Locked on Mizzou. You are Locked on Mizzou, your daily podcast on the Missouri Tigers. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, all you true sons and daughters, I'm John Miller, your Mizzou mafioso and the central scrutinizer of Missouri Tigers football and basketball. And today's episode is brought to you by Sonos. Sonos is the official sponsor of ESPN College Football. Go to Sonos.com to learn more. And you know what? Some big news dropped by Gabe DeArmond yesterday at PowerMizzou.com. His expectation is that Brady Cook is going to be your starter at quarterback on Wednesday for the Armed Forces Bowl for Missouri, of course, against the Army Black Knights. And well, from my perspective, I'm glad. I'm happy if this really happens, if Gabe is accurate here. Again, this is his expectation. Things can always change, but this is the right move for Missouri, in my opinion, and maybe a move that's been a little bit overdue. Again, whether you think it's physical injury reasons that Connor Bazelak maybe hasn't performed up to his standards the last few weeks, or maybe it's just a mental block, perhaps some combination of both. Perhaps it is just confidence. Either way, I think Missouri needs an extra element that Brady Cook and Tyler Macon can provide, frankly, and that's with the legs. The quarterback run game is something that the Missouri offense sorely lacked this season, in my opinion. And Brady Cook can definitely add that element at the very least. Now, he's shown the ability to throw a little bit in garbage time for Missouri. It'll be interesting to see when Brady Cook has third and 10, third and 15, for instance. You guys know I like to analyze the passing downs more than just your standard first and tens a lot more closely. So it'll be interesting to see what Brady Cook has to do with real reps, with real live bullets coming at him on Wednesday, if that's indeed the direction Missouri goes. Now, in terms of all-time bowl appearances, you might be surprised to know that Missouri fares pretty well historically. The Armed Forces Bowl will be Missouri's 34th bowl appearance. That's good for about, oh, the top 25 or so. So, hey, top 25 program. I think historically that's probably better than you would have thought for Missouri, but you know what? Unfortunately, historically you go all the way back to the Los Angeles Christmas festival of 1924. And unfortunately, Missouri lost its first seven bowl games. So overall, Missouri is 15 and 18 entering the armed forces bowl. So I don't know about you. I'd like to get that a little bit closer to 500 hopefully get one more victory because 16 and 18 sounds a lot better than 15 and 19. I know something that probably nobody on the current roster cares about, but as a young man who used to spend way too much time looking through the old record books of the Missouri media guides, well, this one matters to me and all you other historians out there. Of course, This chapter of the high school recruiting season, early signing period, just came to a close. Of course, recruiting never really stops these days, especially in the days of basically consequence-free transfers. You even have to be recruiting your own roster all year, seemingly. And speaking of which, well, Trey John Jeffcoat announcing that he will be back at Missouri next season. Frankly, I didn't realize that was that huge of a question. I didn't think that Trey John was going to be off to the NFL after this season or anything like that. But apparently, hey, again, in the portal era, you just never know. So even with two years left of eligibility, Trey John felt the need to make a graphic on Canva and let us all know that he's coming back. 
And one more recruiting note since we're on it. I thought, interestingly, last week, Eli Drinkwitz talked about his philosophy for the amount of transfers and high school players that he wants to take. And he really wants to strike a balance there, which makes a lot of sense. On one hand, 2022 going to be a big year for Drinkwitz and the future of his entire program. So you want to have a good 2022 season, but at the same time, you don't want to do it at the expense of future seasons as well. So Drinkwitz says his rule of thumb is basically for every player that transfers out of the Missouri program, well, he's going to look for another transfer to come replace that guy. On the other hand, the rest of it, well, the rest of filling out the rosters, hopefully that's going to be through the high school ranks. So clearly, while Drinkwitz not afraid to take somebody from the portal, multiple guys through the portal, obviously, clearly the high school ranks is still where the lifeblood of any program is always going to come for is always going to come from. Excuse me. I mean, really, if you think about the best players in Missouri history, almost all of them have come from the high school ranks, whether it was Brad Smith, Chase Daniel, Jeremy Macklin, Martin Rucker, whoever it might be, just about all of them, with with very few exceptions, came from the high school ranks. I guess Marcus Golden would be a notable exception, but again, a junior college guy, not a not a transfer portal guy, as we think of it in today's terms. But certainly Nick Bolton, one of the finest high school players that Missouri has signed in recent years. But you know what? I want to talk more about Nick Bolton and his absolutely outstanding play for the Kansas City Chiefs this past week. And also some curious fourth down decisions by the San Diego, excuse me, Los Angeles Chargers. One of these days, I'm not going to do that, I promise. But no, the Chargers had some controversial decisions. I want to weigh in and say that both sides of that argument might be wrong. How about that? But first, I want to tell you about prize picks because bowl season is here, Missouri fans. And you know what that means. One more opportunity to put some shekels down on Tyler Beatty. Yes, maybe he can win you some more money because that guy has been kind of money over at Prize Picks so far this season. I've been telling you about Prize Picks all season. And you know what? If you haven't signed up yet, now's the perfect time. It's bowl season. And guess what? We can also make college basketball a little bit more exciting too, not just about the gridiron. So you know what? All our users that that Sign up at Prize Picks today. When you use the promo code Locked On, you'll get an instant deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Again, that's a one hundred percent instant deposit match up to a hundred dollars when you use the promo code Locked On at Prize Picks. Daily fantasy made easy. Well, it's safe to say former Missouri linebacker Nick Bolton is starting to settle in to pro football quite nicely. He played 99% of the defensive snaps, I believe, all but one snap by Bolton on defense last, last week. You know, he was mostly just a first and second down kind of guy for most of this season. So it just shows that now the Chiefs trusting him much more in pass coverage and well with good reason it seems like just from my eyes I've been watching Bolton closely all season as a big fan of his and of the Chiefs as well and it just seems like to use a cliche the game's just starting to slow down a little bit he's playing much more instinctually in my opinion seems like he's more comfortable and with what Steve Spagnuolo and the Chiefs are wanting him to do and you saw it with 14 tackles by Bolton, three passes defended, including one ball he batted up in the air that his teammate intercepted too. So some huge, huge plays by Bolton, including on some fourth downs, by the way, too. And, you know, it's interesting. The Chargers went for fourth downs over and over again in this ball game, at least three or four times that I can recall, and they weren't successful obviously. So anytime that happens, well, you're going to get the naysayers coming out. You're going to get the second guessers coming out. And I don't blame them. It's it's easy because the conventional wisdom, right? And this is what lots of old school football people will say. They'll say, you have to take the points. 
And I understand that logic to some ex extent, but to me, both sides of the argument are too rigid. Because on one hand, you have Joe Staley, the Chargers coach, and his thing is, well, the numbers say that I have a slightly better chance to win the game if I go for it, so therefore I'm going for it. And meanwhile, the other side is also too rigid. They say, well, you have to take the points. Well, number one, you don't have to do anything. Obviously, you can do whatever you want. And clearly, if the Chargers would have scored a touchdown on at least one of those possessions, well, you can see a path to them clearly winning the game despite failing on the other opportunities. So to me, without getting too far into the weeds on any one of these individual decisions, I just want to take a, a bigger, more granular look at the whole thing. See, to me, this rigid type of thinking is sort of like the Gary Pinkle version of the two-point chart from years ago. And it was, well, Gary Pinkle just had this chart at one point, and he said in the, I remember an early Illinois game, for instance, there was a sort of curious two-point decision, and his explanation after the game was, well, we're, we just go with the chart. And to me, the analytics, the modern analytics thing, it's just another version of Gary Pinkle's chart. And the problem with the chart is that we're treating football like it's a machine. And as somebody who studies economics a lot, quite frankly, this is a problem with almost every aspect of economic analysis, for instance. Like people will say, hey, we need to jumpstart the economy as if it's like your your truck's engine or something. Hey, just hook up some electricity to the battery, hook up those jumper cables and just jump start it. Big deal, right? Except human beings are a billion times more complicated than a truck engine. Just one person's brain is about the most complicated thing you could possibly imagine on earth. Certainly orders of magnitude more complicated than a machine. So if you think about it, football, well, guess what? There's 22 different human beings on the field at all times. Those are the players. Plus, you've got the coaches who are telling the players what to do at a certain level. Then you've got the referees. That's a lot of people. That's a lot of different variables. Again, the most complicated things in the world, the human brain. So football, the game itself, it's not a math problem. It's not a machine. No, football is indeed a living, breathing organism, just like all 22 players and, and coaches and referees on the field. Don't get me wrong. It's great to know the aggregate numbers. It is. It's good to know those types of things. It'll tell you, it'll give you good information about, maybe make you realize, well, gee, maybe I should be a little bit more aggressive in general going forward on fourth down. I don't have any problem with that conclusion. Again, the problem I have, it's it's either way. It's, oh, you have to go for it or you shouldn't, or you should always take the points. To me, both of those types of thinking are equally flawed, just on different sides of the coin. And coming up, I want to talk about a much needed victory for your Missouri Tiger basketball team. But first, let's talk about betonline.ag, where, by the way, Missouri, a slight move in the line. Tigers now four-point underdogs over at Bet Online, where, of course, as always, you can get your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit when you use the promo code Locked On. And you know what? Of course, whether you're into football, basketball, boxing, UFC, your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of this amazing offer for the 21 and 22 season. Yes, 2022 is fast approaching. So be sure to get in on all the action over at Bet Online. And when you do, once again, use the promo code locked on for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit at Bet Online, where the game starts. And by Built Bar, which is giving you the best of both worlds this holiday season. Delicious and healthy. And I can tell you from personal experience, that is absolutely true. Built Bar is my go-to snack when I need something 
on the go, just a little bit of energy boost, a little bit of something in the old stomach where you can't go wrong with a built bar. And you'll probably have, frankly, a hard time choosing which flavor you want. So why don't you get a mixed box, figure it out for yourself. People are very passionate about their favorite flavors of built bar. So you know what? When you try them out, I think you'll see why. So you know what? Go to built.com right now. Use the promo code LOCKED15 and you'll get 15% off your next order. Once again, promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Well, my apologies for not getting out a Friday episode. Unfortunately, my daughter's been a little bit under the weather lately, so I had to keep her home from preschool on Friday. Yada, yada, yada. She's doing okay, folks. Don't worry about it. But it also caused me to have to miss Saturday's Utah-Missouri basketball game. I, I watched it at home, but normally I attend all the home games. This one I just had to miss. But there was a bit of a blessing in disguise there because I got to listen to the fabulous John Sunvold on the call. And, well, one thing that was interesting, Sunvold related a story little conversation he had with Kobe Brown before the basketball game where he challenged Kobe to go get 30, essentially. He basically asked him, he said, hey, you think you can get 30 points? And Kobe, I think, was a little bit surprised and said, what, tonight? And John Fold, Sunvold's going, yeah, you should just – he wanted to get him in that mentality of scoring 30 points. He told Kobe, listen, you don't have to literally get 30 points, but I want you to be that aggressive offensively because I think that'll open things up for your whole team. And interestingly enough, a career high for Kobe Brown, 27 points, almost got to 30, but I think message sent, message sent and message received. So that was interesting for sure. Certainly, Missouri benefited from Brandon Carlson being out of the ball game because of COVID health and safety protocols. He's expected to be back as soon as tomorrow for the youth so not exactly a big a big concern for his safety let's put it that way and, and in fact Sunvold actually brought up another interesting point which is hey um considering teams like the Missouri Tigers he revealed that the Tigers are a hundred percent vaccinated so his point is why are we still testing kids who are not only vaccinated but have no symptoms they aren't sick we're kind of doing this to ourselves at this point, aren't we? Listen, this isn't me saying COVID isn't real. This isn't me trying to get into some big COVID debate. But my goodness, we see the NFL adjusting a little bit now. They're saying, oh, gosh, I guess maybe we shouldn't just test every single person in the world, regardless of their health and vaccination status. Perhaps this is a waste of resources and us cutting our own throat a little bit to use a somewhat inelegant analogy, excuse me. But I don't know. I, I just think that makes a lot of logical sense to me. And at, at a certain point, the NCAA is going to have to adjust its rules here a little bit and its testing procedures or else it's going to make actually getting a real season very difficult and for a reason that doesn't really seem to be necessary. But back to the actual basketball game, of course, Naturally, Kobe Brown was just relentlessly attacking the basket for Missouri, and that really seemed to just show the Tigers the way because the Tigers are one of the five or ten worst three-point shooting teams in the entire country. I believe they're 354th in three-point percentage. So second half, you saw the Tigers make a much more concerted effort, again, especially with with Utah's only real rim protector out of that entire basketball game. Well, the Tigers just relentlessly took the ball to the basket, and it worked. Listen, sometimes against a really good shooting team, if a team shoots over 40% from three against the Tigers, if they try to play that get-it-in-the-paint style, well, they might just not be able to win. But more often than not, a team isn't going to shoot that great. So if you're the Tigers – just the most efficient offensive game they've played this season, in my opinion, and at least shows maybe a path forward for something approaching hope. 
because before this past game, I'm not sure we had a whole lot. Don't want to go crazy here or anything. Utah on paper was one of Missouri's best chances for a victory this the rest of this entire season. So again, with one of their best players out, shouldn't be a huge shock that Missouri was able to pull off a victory, but you know what? A a reason for optimism nonetheless. And thanks for making Locked on Mizzou your first listen every day. I'll be back tomorrow with a preview of the Missouri Army football game. Going to delve rather deeply into the Black Knights over the next couple days. And of course, into the Missouri-Illinois bragging rights game, which is of course happening the exact same day on Wednesday. Now, make your second listen, Locked on Bets, your daily one-stop shop. For all your gambling needs, that's Locked On Bets, hosted by your boy Q with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling. It's free and available on all platforms. So until next time, I am John Miller, and this has been Locked on Mizzou.